spring has sprung, as they say, here in Tulsa, Oklahoma. But just because we're wrapping up the winter months doesn't mean I'm putting my slow cookers away. I use my crock pots all year long because they are good for so much more than just soups and chilies and chowders that we make in the winter time. Slow cookers are a great tool to have in the busy family kitchen because it's really easy to throw together some meals to get our families fed, especially on those busy nights. So I thought that I would share some crock pot recipes today in this video that have a little bit more of a spring vibe. Tonight I am making this crock pot shrimp scampi from the Magical Slow Cooker. I'll leave the recipe linked in the description box below. I have always been a little bit nervous about doing anything with shrimp in the crock pot with the exception of our crock pot shrimp boil that we do several times over the summer because it's one of my kids favorite. But in that recipe, you don't add the shrimp until the very end of the cook cycle. In this one, you add it towards the beginning. So I will give it a try so that you don't have to and report back and I will go ahead and put the ingredients that I am using up here on the screen right now and then we'll get started. This recipe calls for a pound and a half of shrimp. I only have a pound so we're going to make that work and this is raw shrimp. The tail is off and I am putting it into the slow cooker frozen. A couple tablespoons of olive oil, the juice of one lemon, about a teaspoon of paprika, I'm adding about a teaspoon of oregano, about half a teaspoon, quarter to half a teaspoon of red pepper flake. You can leave this out if you don't like the spiciness. We do. I'm also adding a Parmesan rind. This is the end of the Parmesan wedge and it adds a lot of flavor to dishes like this. Salt and pepper to taste. And then this is one and a half sticks of butter. The original recipe calls for eight ounces, which would be two sticks. But since I'm using less shrimp, I'm just gonna use one and a half sticks which would be 12 tablespoons. That is a lot of butter, but we're going to toss all of this with some pasta at the end. So we're gonna to toss probably about 12 ounces of, of uh, pasta with the sauce here at the end, so it's gonna get dispersed over a lot. I'm gonna pop the lid on this, and the instructions say to cook it on high for two hours. So I'm gonna keep checking on it, probably around 90 minutes since my crock pot tends to cook hot, and we'll see where we're at. It's been almost two hours. I have some water coming to a boil to cook some pasta. I have some of this bronze cut spaghetti from Aldi and this is a 16 ounce package, but I'm not gonna make the whole thing. I'll probably just cook about 12 ounces, which would be about three quarters of this package. And I wanna cook it to just shy of al dente. I'm just kind of par cooking it because I'm gonna add it to the crock pot here in just a little bit and let it finish cooking in there. My shrimp is done. I probably cooked it a little longer than I would have liked anyway, but that's okay, we're gonna give it a go. And I realized after I got it going, that I forgot to put the garlic in. So I'm actually just gonna stir in a little bit of minced garlic now when I'm adding the pasta. This pasta is a little shy of being done. I'm actually gonna put it into the slow cooker. I didn't even drain it. I'm just putting it in hot from the pan. A little bit of the starchy water getting in there is fine. I'm gonna stir this all together and pop the lid back on for about 10 minutes or so so that that pasta can soak up the buttery sauce. And then we're gonna finish it up with a little bit of grated Parmesan cheese and a side of asparagus. I was so excited to see that on sale at the store today. The first time I've seen it in over a year for under $2. So we're gonna plate that up and give it a try. Brick has been outside playing basketball. He's super hungry. So he is going to taste test the shrimp for me. Good, give me a thumbs up. There you have it. The 10 year old boy will eat it for sure. Okay, hubby just tried it. What do you think? I think it's really good. I think it has good flavor. I think the shrimp tastes great. Okay, because I was worried that they would be like overcooked, but you said they're not. Yeah. They taste, they taste yeah, good. They're they not like, good. yeah. Yeah. Okay, good. Yay. There's a winner. Two thumbs up. Even though it's springtime here in Oklahoma, we still get some cooler weather from time to time. We get a lot of rain, you know, some stormy weather, and occasionally we just have some chilly days. We had a cold front roll through last night. So we're gonna make some soup. And while I tend to do, you know, creamy comfort food soups, chowders and chilies in the wintertime, this one is gonna be a little bit lighter. It's a chicken and orzo soup. And I'm using a recipe that I've made before from salt and lavender. I'll leave it linked in the description box below, but I've made it on the stove before and I'm going to adapt it for the crock pot and make a few changes. So I've already got my chicken in the slow cooker and I'll show you what I'm adding to that. As I mentioned, already have my chicken breast in here 
And I'm gonna throw in a couple little Parmesan rinds into this soup as well. The ends of the Parmesan, which I save. I just keep them in the freezer till I'm ready to use them. This is half of a small onion chopped, so it's may, maybe half a cup of chopped onion, probably a scant half cup. And then about a cup or so of chopped carrots. Celery would be good too. If you have a few stalks of celery, I just don't have any today. I've got some minced garlic. I just bought fresh garlic bulbs today, but I wanna use the rest of this that's already chopped up. Probably about a tablespoon or so. I'm gonna change up the seasoning and I'm gonna use rosemary. The salt and lavender recipe just calls for Italian seasoning. I really love the rosemary flavor with just about anything having to do with chicken. So I'm gonna put two teaspoons of this in. Oh, it smells so good, okay. Salt and pepper to taste. I'm gonna go easy on the salt because we're using bouillon. One lemon juice. This is actually a gigantic, half of a gigantic lemon. <laughs> These might be the biggest lemons I've ever seen. I can't even fit half of it in my little squeezer thingy madoodle. Six cups of chicken broth is what I need to add in here. And when I get to the bottom of the better than bouillon, I put a little warm water in the jar and shake it up really well. There's probably about a tablespoon of bouillon in here. So what I'm gonna do is just add the better than bouillon in here. And then I'll add the six cups of water to make up for the moisture. But see, I wanna get all of that from the bottom of the jar. Here we go. See, we did pretty well there. We cleaned that sucker out. Now about five and a half cups of water to make up the rest of the broth base. And I would cook this on low for about six hours. Since I'm getting a later start in the day, it's almost three o'clock, I'm going to put it on high for three hours and then I'll be ready to come back and shred up the chicken because it will be cooked and we will finish up this soup. We still have more stuff to add to it. I forgot to add the butter, but fortunately it's not too late. So I'm gonna to toss in a couple tablespoons of butter also. I wanted to make sure I got that butter in there because otherwise this soup would be very, very lean. There's not any any fat in the soup in most of these ingredients. And I feel like adding a fat just adds a little bit of flavor, a little bit of richness to the dish to make it more satisfying. You could add a little bit of heavy cream at the end of the cook cycle, like right when you're ready to serve it, that would you know probably serve that purpose as well. But I wanted to go ahead and use the butter and see how that turns out. It has been about three and a half hours. My chicken was done and I already shredded that up. It was super easy to shred with a couple of forks. So I'm putting that back in. I'm also adding at this time one cup of orzo pasta and a cornstarch slurry. One tablespoon of cornstarch and three tablespoons of water, cold. Stir that all together and then add it to the pot. Once I get this all mixed in, I'm gonna pop the lid back on. It should take about 15 to 20 minutes for my orzo to cook on high and then we'll be ready to serve this up. I had planned to make up a salad to go along with this, but honestly, I am hungry and I still have to run the swim carpool tonight. So I am going to eat this with just a side of little garlic toast. We just had some rolls left over that I needed to use up and that is gonna be dinner tonight, yummy. Today's video is brought to you by Good Chop, your ultimate kitchen ally for high quality meats delivered right to your doorstep. As we dive into these spring crock pot recipes, you'll notice that many of them include premium proteins from Good Shop. With Good Shop, high quality cuts like 100% grass fed beef, free range and organic chicken and sustainably sourced seafood selections are vacuum sealed and flash frozen at peak freshness. So you can stock your freezer and cook when you want. Now is a great time to give Good Shop a try because they're offering $120 off your first four Good Shop boxes when you visit the link in the description box below or go to goodshop.com slash YouTube and use my code cmindymom120. I've mentioned over and over how much my family loves eating Good Shop products and recently they were featured in our Easter dinner which was specially requested by our kids. My super easy homemade Alfredo with some delicious chicken and steaks that my husband threw on the grill. I'm telling you these steaks are the best we've ever prepared at home and better than many we've had in pricey restaurants. Good Shop sources their products from right here in the US plus there are no antibiotics or added hormones ever. So be sure to visit that link in the description box below to explore their wide selection and elevate your cooking today with Good Shop or go to goodshop.com slash YouTube and use my code CMINIMOM120. That's going to get you $120 off across your first four Good Shop boxes. And thank you again to Good Shop for supporting my channel and sponsoring this video. Tonight we are having crock pot salsa verde honey lime chicken tacos. 
every single word in that title sounds delicious. Salsa verde, honey lime, chicken tacos. I mean, what's not to like? The inspiration is coming from alattefood.com. I will leave a link in the description box. Let me turn you around and show you the ingredients I'm gonna use. I am going to use chicken thighs. You can use chicken breast for this. This is about two and a half pounds of chicken thighs. I'm gonna trim them up just a little bit before I get them in the crock pot. Half a cup of sour cream, a third of a cup of honey, the juice from two limes, and I'm also probably gonna zest one of these limes as well. I'm gonna mix that all together along with a teaspoon each of salt, oregano, paprika, garlic powder, onion powder, cumin, and then a tablespoon of chili powder. I'm going to pour that mixture over the chicken in the slow cooker and get it going on low for about six hours. Now that I have my chicken going in the slow cooker, I am just making up some fresh pico. And if your family likes Tex-Mex or Southwest flavors, it really is a good idea to learn how to make your own pico de gallo because it's pretty easy and it's kind of pricey considering what it is. If you're purchasing it in the store, it can get kind of pricey. It's just tomatoes, onion, lime juice, salt, and cilantro. Unfortunately, I forgot to pick up cilantro at the store, so if I make it by the store later, then I'll pick some up to mix into ours. Some people don't like cilantro and they just leave it out. But I like to make mine a few hours ahead of time because once I get all of those flavors marinating and in the fridge, I just think it makes it so much better to have that fresh pico along with our dinner. And it's super easy, super cheap, especially when compared to the store pico de gallo. You guys, I cannot believe I did this again. <laughs> I did this again. Last night, it was the butter with the shrimp scampi, and tonight, it was the salsa verde. <laughs> you guys were probably like, uh, didn't she say salsa verde when she was talking about the chicken tacos, and you didn't see it in the ingredients, you didn't see me add it to the crock pot? What can I say? I'm always talking about the fact that I'm just a regular standard issue mom out here living a regular real life, and sometimes these things happen. My chicken is done, and I shredded that up, but we still have about 30 to 45 minutes before we eat, so I went ahead and added this can of salsa verde, mixed it in with the chicken, so we can simmer together for a little bit before we're ready to put the tacos together. But if you are making this yourself, I would add it at the beginning of the cook cycle instead of at the end. What can I say? My mom brain is still on spring break. I thought about making like a spicy crema or a jalapeno ranch or something to drizzle over the top of these, but because the chicken is so saucy, I don't think it needs that. Most of the time when I make shredded meat like pork or beef or chicken for tacos, it's a little drier, so it's nice to have something to put on the top, but this one is gonna have plenty of flavor, so I'm gonna skip that and just go with the pico and some shredded lettuce. We have cheese, we have sour cream for putting these together. I have some refried beans on the stove. I like to doctor mine up with a little cheese and uh, sour cream, mix that all together so we can have chips and refried beans. But I was so excited to find these at my Walmart. They are a flour tortilla that is like a little closer to a fresh tortilla. I think they're maybe trying to dupe like the H-E-B flour tortillas. They're, they're not, they're not the same, but they are still better than any other store brand tortillas I've tried. I found these on the clearance bakery rack a few weeks back and I popped them into the freezer. Because they have a limited number of ingredients, they don't last very long when you leave them out. So I pulled those out today and I'm gonna use those to make up my tacos with all the things that I already mentioned. And this is gonna be like a super yummy, delicious dinner. Here comes the best part. Mm. I don't even have any words. It's just yum. I have one more spring crock pot recipe to share with you guys right now. I'm sitting in my closet because it is Easter weekend. And my husband and I had the same deal with the Easter Bunny that we have with Santa Claus. If you watch my channel, I talk about this at Christmas time. My husband and I let Santa Claus know that we understand he's a super busy guy. He's got a lot of houses to visit, so he's welcome to like stop by our house for a quick treat, you know, some milk and cookies, but that we'll take care of the gifts and the stockings for our kids. And we let the Easter Bunny know the same thing. So I'm sitting here getting Easter baskets and Easter eggs ready. 
because my husband and I have decided we're gonna do something kind of fun with an Easter egg hunt this year. My kids really enjoy watching game shows, like watching old episodes of Family Feud. We watch Wheel of Fortune a lot of nights. They are really into Deal or No Deal. And also, my husband and my kids really enjoy watching Survivor, the show Survivor. It's not my thing. I'm not a fan, but they love watching it. So I don't know if any of you have seen the new Survivor show that's like Survivor, Deal or No Deal. <laughs> it's like a combination of the two. So my husband and I came up with this sort of fun concept to have an Easter egg hunt with the kids on Easter Sunday, but make it like Deal or No Deal. <laughs> so I'm putting together the Easter eggs. We think that'll be a super fun way uh, to just kind of change it up, especially as our kids are getting older, make it fun for them. But um, you'll be seeing this well after Easter, but just wanted you guys to know that I'm a regular real mom out here doing the same things that a lot of parents are doing this weekend. And if you have older kids, uh, you know, maybe that's an idea that you can put in your wheelhouse, just keep in your mind for next year. If you have the same deal, you know, with the Easter Bunny that we have, because I know a lot of parents maybe have that deal as well, so they can take something off the Easter Bunny's plate. I am running out the door for my daughter's spring school program, but when I get back, I'm gonna be throwing these beef euros in the crock pot. This recipe is coming from tastebetterfromscratch.com. I'll leave the original link in the description box below, but let me turn you around and I'll show you the ingredients I'm using and we'll get that going. What I have here is a pound and a half of thinly sliced sirloin tip that I got at Aldi. And I went ahead and cut that up into strips. Actually, I got wise part way through the process and put the knife away and got out the kitchen shears. It was so much easier to cut it with the kitchen shears. I'm pretty sure you could use chuck roast. You could use beef stew meat. I think there's lots of different options. I just thought this one looked really good at Aldi and the price was right. In here, I have a mixture of olive oil, lemon juice, garlic powder, cumin, thyme, oregano, salt, and pepper. And I'm gonna pour that over the top. Like I said, I'll leave this recipe that I'm following linked in the description box below. That recipe also has instructions for a homemade tzatziki. I just bought mine from the store that we're gonna use later on to put these together. But for now, I'm going to pop the lid on this and I'm gonna cook it on low for about five to six hours, probably closer to the five hour mark because my crock pot cooks a little bit hot. My beef is done, it smells fantastic. And here's how I am assembling these. I've got one of my little mini nons and I did put mine in the microwave for just a few seconds to warm it up. I have some of this tzatziki style dip and I like to put that on the non so that it's spread evenly. I've got my beef and now I'm going to add some lettuce, this is a mixture of cucumbers, tomatoes, and red onions with a little splash of vinegar and some dry dill all mixed up. I'll put that on top there. A little bit of feta. And then I'll probably just scour the refrigerator for some fruit, the pantry for like some pretzels or chips or something to finish this meal out. Should be super, super easy. YouTube thinks you might wanna watch this video next, but also make sure that you're subscribed because I have lots more videos planned for April and May, including more tips and help for saving money at the grocery store, more quick and easy meal ideas, budget meal ideas. So make sure that you're subscribed so you don't miss one.